Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is leak code 212, word search 2. So given an m by m board of characters in a list of string words, return all words on the board. So each word must be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent cells where adjacent cells are horizontally and vertically neighboring. The same letter cell may not be used more than once in a word. So let's have a look at what our first example looks like. So we have an m by m board with a number of different characters within it, and we need to find if any of these words right here exist within the board. We have of, which starts at the first position and ends right here, and we have eat, which is backwards over here. So there are two words within the word array that can be found within the board. So we return those as the output. In terms of implementing it, I would say it's very similar to number of islands, but there is an extra level of complexity to this because we have characters as opposed to zeros and ones. So, in order to make this as optimized as possible, what we could use is a try data structure to store all of our words in the dictionary. So firstly, what we need to do is create our try data structure with these words. The try data structure looks like this. So there is nothing within the initial position. And then we create the try. So we've traversed down oath and we've put that within the try. And at the bottom position, what we usually have within a try is a flag of some sort to say that this is a word. But instead, what we're going to have is word equal to this entire word. So it's essentially going to be equal to oath. So we've checked over oath. Now we can go to P. So P E A. So now we can just add eat and rain to the try. And this will make more sense in a minute when we start DFS in through this 2D array as to why we've done this. So again, word at this point at A is going to equal P. Word here is going to equal EAT. And word in this section is going to equal rain. Okay, so we've created our try data structure. Now we can start carrying out the DFS on this tree. So let's start at the first position. We have an O. So firstly, we need to check if O has the word attached to it. In this case, it doesn't. So we can start looping through. So we can check to see whether it's in the first position of our try. So is it equal to P, E, R, or O? Well, we have the O right here. So at this point, we can DFS to the next position, right? So up, right, down, and left. So there are four possible positions, but we have to check if it's inbound. So this and this are invalid because it's not inbound, right? So across this way, is j is less than zero. Up this way, i is less than zero. We also have to check whether it's too far down this way. So i is greater than board dot length minus one. We also have to check where it's too far over this way, where it's board j is greater than board at i dot length minus one, right? So we need to check whether it is valid to begin with. So that's the first step to check whether the positions are valid. Also, we need to check. So say we went to E. E is not within the next position of this try. So this descendant of O is not equal to this value. So we cannot go down this way. So the only position we can go is to this A because it's equal to the A within the try. So we can DFS at this position. So we can go up, right, down, and left. So we can't go up because that's out of bounds. We can't go right because the next value within the try is t, and this is equal to a. So we can't go that way. Can we go back? Well, we've already visited o, so we can't go this way. So we need to make an adjustment for this. And the way we do that is we could use either a visited flag, so we could have visited and pass in all the positions that we have visited, so we could pass in 0, 0. But this increases your space complexity. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just set this value before we finish this section. We're going to set this to an arbitrary piece of data. So we're going to set it to a hash. So it's no longer equal to an O. So we never go back to that position. Then we can go to T. We can DFS at that position. So we can't go back because we set this A to a hash. We go to T. We try to go to E. We can't go to E because the next position in the try is a H. We go to A. We can't go to A because it's a H. So the only position we can go to is this value right here. Now this value has word attached to it. Okay, so it has a dot word attached to it. And if that is the case, 
then we push this value. So we're going to add this value to our result. So we're going to have a result array and we're just going to push in both. Now we want to stop this from being duplicated again. So what we can do at this point in time is we can set this to null now because we have found it. So if there's two positions where there is oaf within the board, we're not going to get that now because we have set this work to null. Great. So at this point, what we need to do now is we need to backtrack because we found this value. We need to go back up because all these values are currently a hash, right? We need to reset this board, right? So we need to reset this to a H. We need to re reset this to a T, this to an A and this to an O. So we can go ahead and do that. So now that we've done that, we can traverse through the board so we can check at position A. Is that within the first position of the try? No, it's not. So we can move to the next position. Again, A is the same. So we move to N. N is not found within this first level of the try. So again, we move along. E is found within it. But if you see, if we traverse or DFS through E, the next position is A and we don't have this. So we can move on to T. T is not within the first position. A is not within the first position. We go to E. E is within the first position. So we have this E. So we check is word attached to it. No, it's not. Word is not attached to it. Word is attached to the T down here. So we can carry out DFS on this. We can't go this way because it's out of bound. We can't go to N up here. We can't go to R down here. We can only go to A because the second position within this try now is A. And before we move over to A, remember we need to convert this to a hash so that we don't go back to it. We go to A, we DFS at A. We can't go this way because we've converted E to a hash. We can't go to A up here. We can't go to K down here. We can only go to T because the next value in that try is a T. So we check at T. Does this have a word property? Yes, it does. So we can push in that value here into our result array. And then again, we need to clean this up. So we need to convert the hash back to an A, the hash back to an E so that we can carry on traversing through the board. So I, H, K and R. If we look at the top level, the only one that we can find is R and all its next positions. If we DFS in all directions, it do not equal A. So we can move on. I, F, L and V are not within this first level either. So we can end this and just return our output, the result here. So that's the basis for solving this problem. Time of complexity in this case. So say we had a board that looks something like this and we were at this position and the words we have to look for are AA and treble A. How many steps can we take from this initial position? Well, firstly, we need to loop through every value within this board. So time complexity is going to be O M where M is the number of characters within the board. And if we're at position A within the middle here, what is the maximum number of positions that we can go to that are inbound and valid? It's four. So it's going to be four times. What is the maximum number of positions? So we had extra A's added on down here. What is the maximum number of positions that this A can go to? Well, it's going to be three in this case that are inbound and valid. So it's going to be three. And it's going to be to the power of L minus one. L in this case is the length of the words within the try. So that is the time complexity. So space complexity is going to be O N, where N is the amount of characters within the try. So firstly, we need to create a function called build try, which is pretty self-explanatory because we need to obviously create our try. So to start off the try, we're going to have root, which is going to be equal to an empty object. We're going to loop through the words. We're going to get the current node. We're going to pass it as a reference to root. Then we're going to loop through the characters of the word. Okay, so if current node at the character is equal to null, then we can just say current node at character is equal to an empty object. So we're just creating an empty object at that current node at position char. Otherwise, we can traverse through And then once we reach the end and we've built this tryout, we need to add the word property. And the word property is going to be equal to the word. So the word that we've looped through within these words, just so that we can return this within our results. And finally, we need to return root. So within the main body of the actual function, we need to initialize result, which is going to be an empty array. We need to create or we need to build out the try. So let's call it root and we can say build try and we can pass in words. Then we need to loop through the board to initialize the DFS. So 
moving through the rows. Looping through the columns. And then within the DFS, we're going to pass in the root. So the try that we've just created, I, J, going to pass in board. And we're also going to pass in result and pass in board. Now we need to create the DFS function. So DFS, we can call the root node. I and J can stay the same, as well as result and board. So the first thing we do within our DFS function is check whether the position or whether the node has the word property attached to it. If it is, we know we found a word within the board. So we can push node.word, the property which we created down here, which is equal to the word that we looped through. We can push that into the result array. And then we need to set the word property to null. And the reason as stated in the solution was because we cannot have duplicates. So say we found H here, that's going to have the word property attached to it. If there was another oath within this board, the H on that would also have the word property attached to it because it's the exact same word within the try. So we need to set that to null so that we don't have duplications within our final result. Then we need to check whether the value is inbound. So if I is less than zero, I is, or J is less than zero, that's out of bounds. If I is, or if I is greater than board, dot length minus one, or j is greater than board at zero, dot length minus one, we can return. So these are all out of bound. If node board i j is null, we can return. And what this is saying is if the position in the board is not found within the try, just return, because that isn't a potential path. Now we need to stop an infinite loop from occurring. So we create a reference to board ij, and we'll explain what this is for in a second. We set board at ij to equal the hash, and this is to stop an infinite loop, so we don't go back to the previous value, which we've already looked at. We need to carry out the DFS in all four directions now. So we node at c, so node at board ij, i, j, result, and board. Now we can copy this three more times. And we just need to change the direction. So i plus one, i minus one, j plus one, j minus one. Okay, so once we've DFS through all of the positions and we've checked the board and they've all returned a value, we need to reset board at ij. So that's where c comes into play. So board at ij is currently a hash. And we need to convert it back to the value carry on traversing through each value within this board. So we just set that back to C. And then finally, we need to return result. That's looking good. Let's give this a run. Okay, let's submit it. And there you go. 